What's going on? Part-time Samurai back with something a little different today. You may be wondering where I've been the past month or so. Well, school and work are the usual suspects yet again, but I also took a well-deserved vacation. However, I also bought a Nintendo Switch, and boy has that thing done a number on my attention span. By some miracle, I was able to purchase my Switch on launch day without pre-ordering. So now that I've had a month or so to take in all the hype, the controversy, and general media buzz surrounding the Switch, I'm going to give you my personal take on Nintendo's ambitious console and show you how mine has held up since launch day. So as you can see, I've got everything laid out on the table here including the docking station, the Switch itself, Joy-Con controllers, and the Pro Controller. To this day, I am still fascinated by how small the actual console is even after using it for a month. I actually went ahead and purchased a screen protector for my Switch, and I can tell you from experience it was well worth the investment. They're pretty cheap on Amazon actually, but I'll leave a link below for the one I have. Anyways, what I really love about the Switch is the all-metal accenting it has, especially for the Joy-Con slides on each side. The power button and the volume buttons have held up very nicely, and I have yet to have any overheating issues, but you can definitely feel some heat coming out of the console, especially when you're playing CPU intensive games like Zelda Breath of the Wild. This also brings me to the battery question. If you're playing a game like Zelda, yes, the battery will only last you about three to four hours. However, for a busy adult such as myself, this is more than enough time, and most of my play sessions only last an hour or two anyways. And just for a quick frame of reference, here's what the game cards look like. And as you can see, they're very similar to the DS and 3DS cartridges. Now that I've got the screen on, I've got to tell you, I was pleasantly surprised when I first turned on my Switch and discovered that it had a working touchscreen. I probably missed that announcement in the months leading up to the launch, but it still took me by surprise. Anyways, the screen is very responsive, even with my screen protector covering it. I am really hoping that Nintendo decides to re-release some DS games for the Switch Virtual Console, kind of like what they did for the Wii U eStore. And lastly on the console is the back of it. My only real complaint here is that you can kind of tell just how shiny my console is after only a month of use. I'm kind of a neat freak when it comes to keeping my consoles clean, but my hours of handheld play, especially while I was on vacation, have definitely taken their toll. I did use the quick stand quite a bit, but I've had zero issues with mine. I know a lot of people have said it's flimsy and, you know, very easy to knock over, but you just gotta be careful with it. Also, as you can see here under the kickstand, I do have a micro SD card installed. Mine is a SanDisk uh, 128 gigabyte. I also bought that on Amazon. Uh, it's pretty good. I haven't had any issues with it so far. The Switch's game library is pretty small right now, but I'm sure I'll be using more of this card in the following months. All in all, I'm really impressed with the console and I'm glad it's managed to survive my month of near constant usage. Next we'll look at some of the accessories, and first up is the docking station. Mine still looks and feels like it's brand new, but as you can see, there is not a whole lot going on with this piece of plastic. It's got a USB-C port for the AC adapter, an HDMI output, and some standard USB ports so you can charge controllers and whatnot. There was a lot of controversy about the docking stations scratching the actual console, and even reports of some of these being shipped in a slightly bent condition. Fortunately, I have not had issues with either thus far. So let's move on to the controllers over here, shall we? Starting with the Joy-Cons. I really only use these controllers when I've got my Switch in portable mode. The Joy-Cons were also a notorious issue at launch. There were many reports that the left Joy-Con in particular just had really bad connectivity issues. Again, I haven't had any issues with mine, and if I did, I would have sent it back to Nintendo. I've heard Nintendo's actually done a really good job of replacing the left Joy-Cons for those that have had issues with theirs. So, good job Nintendo, keep it up. Again, I don't use the Joy-Cons all that much, except when I'm playing Zelda on the go or doing some multiplayer with my friends. I suspect Nintendo is going to have a whole line of Joy-Cons in the near future, especially since they can come in different colors. Maybe they'll start making custom Joy-Cons for specific games? Who knows? And last, but certainly not least, is the Pro Controller. I've got to give this controller some credit. I've literally had my hands on this controller every single day. I honestly believe this is one of the best controllers Nintendo has ever made. Each button is easy to reach and very tactile, and the analog sticks are extremely smooth. I do try to clean my controller off after each gameplay session, but this thing is solid. Just to give you an idea, here is the Wii U Pro Controller for comparison. 
Gone is the shiny plastic and awkward analog stick placement. Nintendo really nailed it with the Switch Pro Controller, and for that, I say thank you. If you're thinking about getting a Switch, I highly recommend you go the extra mile and buy a Pro Controller. It seriously makes playing these games a lot more fun, and a lot more natural. Of course, no console is complete without games. Right now, I only have three physical releases, including Zelda, Bomberman R, and The Binding of Isaac. I'm a huge fan of physical media, so I plan on buying as many cartridges as possible for the Switch. However, I will still be buying my fair share of digital releases as well. Games like Fast RMX and Blaster Master Zero were great additions to my Switch library. Plus, it's been confirmed that Ukulele will be coming as a digital release to the Switch as well. I am really excited for that game, as Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong 64 are some of my favorite games from childhood. All in all, I am extremely satisfied with my Switch, and it's held up very well after a month of continual usage. If you have the chance to pick up this console, I'd say go for it. Once we get more games on the Switch and more accessories, I'm positive I'll be making more videos on the console as time goes on. Anyways, thanks for watching, and let me know your thoughts on the Switch in the comments below. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time.